Look, it's a giant. Some may call it a gargant, perhaps even a mega one. Yes, this is a Kings of War giant from Mantic. And we are gonna build and paint this guy. I'm gonna do this one a little bit different, a little bit easier on the editing for me, so. No voiceover, we are just gonna turn on the camera every once in a while during the build and see how it goes. Uh, so, the reason why I'm building this is because, well, Games Workshop Gargans are like $200 and this thing's 40 bucks, so, math. Doesn't look as cool, but I think we could paint it up and maybe fiddle around with it a little bit and uh, come up with something decent looking. So this is uh, made out of PVC, fairly hard PVC, so it doesn't bend too much. Uh, you got a few optional parts here. I think you got two different weapon arms and two different heads. Those two. Quality is okay. It's not the best. Again, $40. Um, yeah, you got a few little arrow bits and all that. Uh, I've already fiddled with it a little bit. So there are some fit problems with this miniature. Urgh. Uh, I already kind of bent this down uh, a little bit. You can see the, come on, get in there. You can see the large gaps here. Well, it was actually a heck of a lot worse. And I already fixed this as best I can by putting both pieces into very, very hot water uh, and then putting them together and then trying to form them into place. Trust me, this, was whole, this hole was a lot bigger. So the rest we're gonna fill in with putty. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna do any conversion work or not uh, because this guy's rather uh, skinny and he's already pretty well covered with stuff. I don't think there's a whole lot I can really do or I, I'm sure there's a lot that I can do, just not a lot that I can picture doing in my head. Um, and we're gonna go over filling all these gaps and whatnot because <clears throat> there will be gaps. But uh, that's it for now. I already did a little bit of the cleanup work, very few seam lines on it. Uh, I think we're gonna start moving to the assembly and the gap filling. I've done a majority of the cleanup work. You can do it very easily. Did most of it with an X-Acto knife. You can use a file, but this hard PVC plastic uh, does get a little bit fuzzy if you use a file, but you can scrape off the fuzz. Uh, currently doing the first round of gap filling. We're gonna be doing this two or three times because of the amount of gaps. And, and obviously I glued it together. Super glue works perfectly fine. Uh, for the gaps, using a epoxy putty, which is E epoxy putty. I prefer this over green stuff. Uh, it's water soluble. It's uh, real easy to smooth and it dries rock hard and doesn't change shape uh, when it's dry, so it's not rubbery. Uh, and just mix it up. Uh, one to one ratio is perfectly fine and wax carving tools to uh, smush it into place. Usually works a little better if you let it dry for about 15 minutes before you do the actual sculpting and we just have to wet the tool, plain water, don't need any additives, and just press it in, smear it around, flatten it out, and start conforming it to the shape you want. Try not to get it super wet because it starts balling up a little bit. But this is very easy to smooth. You can actually just use your finger. You can use a toothpick. We could just push it in like that. And this is the first round. This is like the gap filling round. Uh, then later I'll go back with some more. Like this area here, we need to re-sculpt these muscles because this part is sticking out way too far. So we'll, we'll add a lot more right here. But we'll do this, then we'll let it dry fully for an hour or two. And then we'll add a little more, like right here. I'm gonna have to fill out this neck portion a little bit more. Easy peasy. So I've been trying to think of any little bit of conversion work I can do to this thing. Uh, the problem being is it's just very busy. Look at all the stuff that's on him. So I really don't wanna add more because I feel like I'm just adding junk on uh, top of junk. Um, the one thing, I decided to do was trim down the club a little bit. It's fine, it's just very, very long. Um, a little bit too long, I think. Uh, just visually saying, uh, logically, yeah, sure, it's fine. 
but I'm gonna trim it down a little bit. So all I'm gonna do, we have little ropes here and little ropes here. So I'm gonna take this little razor saw and just, we're gonna cut this down and then basically take out this chunk and then I'm gonna slide it forward. We can just pin it right there. May have to do a little putty work, but because with all the ropes around, it should be very easy to do. No problems there. Thought about adding some extra branches on it. So we may do that. We'll see how things go. Don't wanna add anything too delicate. Uh, by the way, I wanted to leave the furs off for the painting. However, getting them on once the head was installed uh, was a little bit difficult. So I just went ahead and glued the furs down. Whole lot of super glue there and just pressing it make sure it takes shape. Uh, so I think we still got a lot of putty work to do. Uh, we gotta attach the arms, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, one thing I should have done that, uh, ahead of time is this part of the stomach that really doesn't fit very well. You can see this huge gap where these ropes are. Nothing I could do about that, unfortunately. But here, we're gonna, either with a knife or something else, I'm actually gonna trim down this excess part and that'll make filling this gap much, much easier. Again, I should have done that to begin with. But uh, as you can see, we got a lot more putty work to do. This is still the first stage, just filling in gaps. And then we have more sculpting to do to uh, make them go away. Decided to do a little bit of conversion work. Uh, the problem is they're just, this thing is so busy. I really can't add anything uh, more to it. And it's really difficult to remove it. Uh, club, on the other hand, we're gonna make this tree look a little bit more like a tree. Already drilled some holes, simple paper clips bent up and gonna be covering them up with putty here. So we get some nice roots on our base. And we're gonna let this dry uh, quite a long time because we have to uh, sculpt some bark texture, not bark, but you know, wood texture into these roots. So. That is what we're gonna do here. Probably have to do this in two stages, actually. Build it up a little bit, then put a thin layer on. Uh, we'll see in a moment. Um, but pretty much everything else, else is on, except for the arms. I'll go over that probably next, or coming up very soon. Uh, in case anyone asks, and I realize they might. Six inch ruler. This guy is over six inches tall, about seven inches tall case you're wondering about the size of this gargant-ish giant. So we gotta let this dry about 45 minutes and then we'll be back to see if we can sculpt a little detail on it. Just doing a little bit of root sculpting and I let it harden up about an hour or so, 45 minutes. and. Just taking the wax carving tool. This is the most favorite shape, this little pointed scoop. It's best for general sculpting, I find. And just teasing the putty, doing little groove shapes, working it into whatever position I want. I'm trying to Add some detail and also kind of sharpen these things up a little bit. And luckily, things like fur and wood are the easiest things to sculpt. So even if you're bad at it, like me, just tease your putty and you'll eventually get something fairly woody, I hope. Our tree is drying. Once it's completely dry, I'll go back and do a little bit more finer detail work. Again, with the epoxy putty, uh, you can actually carve it when it's uh, fully dry, so great stuff. Uh, last thing to do is work on the arms. They are already attached with super glue. They're pretty solid, but just in case, since this thing's so big, I wanna add a little bit uh, more durability to them. So we're gonna pin them as well. And for that, I have my little pin vise. Woohoo! Normally you would do this, you know, on the inside, but uh, because the material is a little bit thin here, I wanted to go in from a different angle and I wanted to get the arms uh, attached first. And with all the putty work we're doing, we can just patch the hole we're gonna get here. So drill away. 
Okay, I think that's gonna be about it for the build portion. We got all our putty puttyerized and in place. There's probably gonna be one more stage of putty. Uh, once it's primed, we wanna go back and double check everything uh, to make sure there's no little gaps that uh, either need to be filled with more epoxy putty or we can put on some liquid putties or something. Um, looking pretty badass, I think. You know, spreading out those arms really beefs him out a little bit more. Uh, I did consider adding a little bit of putty uh, around the furs here uh, because they are kind of floating a little bit, kind of depending on the way you look at it. You know, maybe it's just kind of a stiff fur. Uh, I didn't want to do it because that'd be a lot. Either you have to stuff a lot of putty in there or we have to sculpt the fur really far down. And I just didn't think that would look very good, especially on this side here. Uh, actually. Now that I say that, there's a little bit of a gap right there. I think I'm going to go back and fill that, so at least that portion is full. Uh, the club, we got that looking very tree-like now. And I realized I cut it down because I thought it was too long, and then I sculpted all this onto it, and I made it longer than it was originally. So, stupid me. Uh, at this point, it probably would have been easier just to sculpt a whole new tree club for him. But that's what I ended up with. The more you know. Do, 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 do. Rainbow. So, uh, one major step I want to mention before we kick off with the painting. We need to clean it. Uh, you can use soap and water or um, degreaser. Uh, what I actually use on plastics like this is uh, isopropyl alcohol. And the thing is with these PVC plastics, uh, the softer they are, the, the greasier they tend to be, the more oil they have and using alcohol to clean them, actually it'll dry the surface because sometimes, depending on what you prime them with, uh, the oils in these things uh, can affect the primer, especially if you're using spray primers. Uh, Reaper Bones, for example, the really soft white stuff, you need to clean that with alcohol before you prime it and be careful about what type of, uh, what type of sprays you use on it. So we're gonna brush it all off. I'm gonna fill that little gap there. And like I said, we'll clean it, prime it, and then we'll be back at the next stage for all the painting. Gonna leave it in two separate parts for the painting. So, painting next. This is a job for Weenie Man. Into the Weenie Mobile. Weenie Man away. 